If you are going to stop an armed aggressor, you must have a force advantage. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Walton Cardiff in England. Henry Holsters is one of the few holster makers I trust to make a quality appendix carry holster that meets all the requirements of a holster. Check them out at a link in the description. The recording begins after the man on the left. You can see that his right hand is blurred because he has a knife in that hand that he has just used to end the life of a man who he had a disagreement with one of his neighbors that this has been brewing for some time. The man on the right with like this big wooden thing is apparently an off-duty police officer. Let's see what happens. You stand still now! Don't you f***ing do it on there! You stand still now! Don't you f***ing do it on there! No! Stop! No, I Stop! Put that knife down now! Put it down! Put it down! Put it down! Yeah, Delta Delta 2, I have the suspect secured. I am fine on my own. Everyone else. You are next, mother There is a bond on your head. I'm, I'm fine here, mate. The knife next. is there. You are right. next. Can you just check, canvas these people and check this is the only suspect? The only yeah, suspect, look, just canvas here. <laughs> he is dead, isn't he? I warned you, the police, one year. Look, it happened. You idiot imbeciles, I was in special forces, you I warned them. I was gonna murder him. <laughs> Could you please put the same cut to front? Right, are you happy to pain. tell me your name now? I think I know what it is, but you haven't actually told me. What's your name, please? So I'm gonna search you. Okay. So what we're searching you for is anything that can harm us, anything that can harm you, or anything that could aid your escape, okay? He is dead and I've been begging the police one year. I was gonna murder him. Because he was against my son, my wife. <laughs> Look, I am begging you, could you put this in front? No, unfortunately we can't. That's not in our when policy. I have disability, don't you believe? I do, I do believe you, but I don't believe that they're causing you any harm and it's proportionate. They are, I have arthritis. It, right, okay, it's proportionate to the Look effect at the that ten you mother Look. Like I'm with the 10 people. There is a bond on your head as what, well. What is it, a lighter? Yeah, hey, is there a point threatening us, is there? Yeah. So I'm going to get you in here, yeah. get in the van. Yeah. So I'm getting you in here, us, is it? Yeah, you have all mother f***s. Get threatening us, I'm going to get you in here. You can hear all the threats at the end from this guy. Go read the news stories that I've linked in the description and you can see that he has been charged with murder and a host of other offenses and has, as his defense, argued that he's hearing voices and it was his teddy bear that told him to kill. We're going to think about lessons. All right, I am going to say that I think that this is a good reason why the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That guy needed somebody who had a force advantage to get him on the ground and get him to put that knife down or stop that threat. Let's talk about it in the lessons. As regards the previous incident, of course, the police are only minutes away, but that's too much. And, and so listen, make sure that you do your best to live a lifestyle of de-escalation, escape, and evasion. I am sure, obviously, that the guy that he had you know, stabbed to death really wished that he had not you know, had this kind of confrontation with the guy. That said, I think that that other person who was stabbed to death absolutely had the right to defend himself and I, you know, I wish that he had had that right respected by his government. 
Now look at this off duty here. I guess my, my obvious guess is that he's an unarmed officer or that he's not allowed to keep it, but recognize he doesn't have a force advantage here. He's trying to use this as kind of a, a shield and to keep the guy away. But, but notice as well, he gave a ton of commands and the guy just blows him off. When you do not have a force advantage, there's almost no chance that he is going to listen to you having that command, which is why you wanna have the force advantage if at all possible. Now, of course, this is one of the reasons that a robust Second Amendment is important to me as an American, and I think because the right to keep and bear arms and self-defense is God-given. Now, because he doesn't have a force advantage, look at what happens here. So then the guy gets inside somebody else's house, assaults another person with a knife, and now he has to try to defend this person with, I don't even know what this is. It's like some kind of uh, bored weirdness, and I'm not even sure what it is. And he's not really any good with it either because it's not a purpose-built tool. I would far rather have him had a baseball bat, a cricket bat, I guess, you know, you'd be more likely to have in England, something like that, because this is so super unwieldy. And that's the problem with environmental weapons. When you just pick something that might could be used, it's not going to be as effective. And when he goes to hit him with it, I want you to notice he doesn't even hit him in such a way that he's trying to incapacitate him. He's just trying to kind of like, like pop him in the side, in the hip or something. And so it, you know, gets him in the hip a little bit, but it doesn't do anything that if you've got to do that, turn that sucker on its side and hit that guy over the head with it and see if you can get him to knock that board down. Now, my guess is, is that he does something like this because he's so worried under British law about being accused of using unnecessary force that he is, is taking very cautious steps. But this guy has a knife and that's the next thing that we see is that he closes the distance and comes at this guy and now the guy sticks his hand out there against a knife a approaching attacker very, very dangerous. And this is why I say people should have firearms. The reason, one of the big reasons is that, that requiring somebody who, who is trying to stop somebody from killing people to close in and, and put their own life at risk is just inane to me. He should have been able to stand at distance, order the guy to drop the knife. And if that guy comes forward or threatens somebody with it, to put that threat down with a force advantage that a firearm would, would offer. And I think that that is important. Now he tells the guy to go inside and close the door and the dude kind of waits until his dogs are inside. I don't know if that's a man or a woman that waited. Now, you know, when I first saw that, I was like, man, just close the door on your stupid dogs, man. You know, your life is at risk. But the more I kind of looked at it, the more I thought, well, our, our aggressor here is kind of backed off a little bit. So maybe they did have the time for that. I would say, I think it's a good lesson and a good reminder. Yes, we all love our pets, but remember their property, their pets. And when your life is at risk, you have to prioritize your life or the life of your loved ones over your pets. And I know I catch grief for that on the channel, but I stand by that advice because pets are, are not the same on the same level as our loved ones. Now, again, clearly this guy is an absolute loon and, and he sits here and, you know, fires up a cigarette and eventually the police are going to come and get him. But I also want to recognize they're going to take forever. And now you see these other guys here and they have transitioned from the big unwieldy piece of wood to a couple of golf clubs. A golf club is a really poor defensive tool. Yes, it has a little bit of range, but the shaft of that golf club is incredibly brittle, especially what looks to me, these ones are probably metal shafted golf clubs. One hit with that thing and that golf club is broken and useless. And so it's just not a very good environmental weapon. I certainly wouldn't recommend that. This is why I think the big lesson here is to keep the best force multiplier that you can, whether that's for home defense or as a concealed carrier, because this guy was a wild threat even after he was done murdering a man over basically an argument. And, and he needed to be stopped and he needed to be stopped quickly and it took way too long for that to happen and way too many people were endangered in that case. I think that the off-duty officer is brave and I commend him for his bravery. And I commend him for staying in the fight, even at grave risk to his own life. I just wish he had better tools to cover his ass.